GLC is now offering a free audio stream of our 24-7 broadcast that we're calling GLC Radio, an online radio station that broadcasts our round-the-clock audio stream on a variety of platforms. GLC Radio gives you the ability to listen to GLC virtually anywhere, through your home or office computer, or on the go with a mobile device. You can access GLC Radio through our website or by searching for God's Learning Channel through iTunes Internet Radio, TuneInRadio.com, or on Shoutcast.com. Explore various GLC Radio-enabled mobile apps by visiting our website at glc.us.com forward slash listen forward slash GLC Radio. GLC Radio, your free connection to GLC anywhere, anytime. Well, welcome to Update, and where did last week go? It seems like we just said this Flew yesterday. Away. Anything you two want to report before we get started? Oh, we did a really, Mom and I did a really great uh, recording of House Call with Dr. Scott this morning. Yes. So that will be airing not this Thursday, but the next Thursday. Not that right? It was. Where is that this Thursday? Essential information for everybody. Um, and I hope you'll tune in and, and have your notepad ready. It's the number. you want to yeah. take notes. It was about the number one killer in America. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is how House Call works. We record it as a Light of the Southwest program, two hours solid. And then that will initially air the fourth Thursday of the month. Mm -hmm. So whatever the fourth Thursday is, if this is the fourth Thursday in a few days, <laughs> no. then it will be airing this week. No. It's not? This isn't. Then it's next week. You're right. It's next, next Thursday, the 27th, right, is when that will air? Well, you know what? No, Thursday, the fourth 27th, Thursday. Yeah. The 27th. The mm 27th. -hmm. So you'll want to be sure to tune into that. After it airs that way, then it's divided up into the four segments and it airs during the house call. Mm -hmm. Right. segments so yeah. anyway it was really really interesting it really was and really what are you playing tonight tonight um Bina, who is in master control has elected Duran kidar and john Anderson. the last time that they were here okay. they were beginning the second leg of their journey mm -hmm. so okay Look forward interesting to that. program Yes. Well, think you have a letter, Dad. Wait, right, before no. you do that, okay. I heard from Jean-Claude Chervon. Did you? Mm -hmm. Good. And I asked him if his little fringe boots survived the fire. He said, only the ones I was wearing. So, of course, he lost everything in the fire. He did. But he has received the donations that have come in, and uh, we forwarded that to him. Mm -hmm. And I just want to pass on to you his gratitude because, um, man, it's really helping him. And he is so humbled those are it, his words. It's not too late if, oh, for gosh, someone no. to help if, if, no. if they miss the first go around. That's right. And you, you can donate for Jean-Claude any, any way you want to. You can do it um, by sending a check, by calling the bookstore, doing it by credit card, by donating on PayPal. There is a little description box when you're donating by PayPal that you can direct where it goes to. But we have had a few people who haven't been able to locate that box. I've never donated that way, so I don't know. Um, they haven't been able to locate that box, so they've been sending an in, uh, email to us at info at glc.us.com to make sure, or calling us to make sure that we know yes. that that is designated for him, right. and so that's okay. how we're doing it. Okay. Okay, you ready for the letter? Now I we're am. ready for the letter. I am. Dear servants of the Lord, we give the Lord Yeshua praise for GLC and all of you hard-working, faithful people. Thanks for all the program and update news. We are honored to be a part of GLC and being a part of the Lord Yeshua's plan. This is our monthly gift for the satellite partners. We ran out of the GLC envelopes. And you not nodded your head. <laughs> Thanks again for your service to Yeshua and just all honor and glory to him. Teresa and Don from Lubbock, Texas. And I got a little map I want to show people, give you an update. 
this is um, the countdown for the cable system. Problem is, we're running out of time. And if we don't get the satellites changed over, the satellites go out, and some, many of you won't be getting it. As you can see, that is very hard to see. Isn't it? Can you read it? I thought it was clearer than that. It is. Uh, Maybe it's that bright red. It that's is. It's throwing you. It? <laughs> well, up in Amarillo, we have 14 to go, and we need $7,000 for that. Over in the New Mexico area, we have uh, 13. 13 and 6,500. And down in Lubbock, we have seven. Seven to go, 3,500. Abilene, five to go, 2,500. And KMLM is six to go with 3,000. So if you find a check laying on your bed with 22,500 and you don't know what to do with it, may I make a suggestion? Yes. <laughs> Well, Send it to help me get caught up on pills. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, you know, it, it is a, kind of a dreadful thing when we see what's going on here. I know that oil fields have shut down and so on, but has God shut down everybody? That's my only question. No. No. He hasn't. No, you know, I think that the, the time that, that we're living in right now is really a time for all of us, not just us here at GLC, That's right. but for all of us to really begin to understand that, excuse me, come hell or high water, we must keep our eyes on the Lord Amen. and we must keep our faith mm -hmm. in right. him. We must choose to be as faithful to him as he is to us. Because you know what? He might be the God of the last minute, but he's always faithful, Amen. you know? So he's always faithful. And there's nothing that he allows any of us to go through without a reason for us going through it, ever. No matter how hard it is, no matter how hard it is, his plan is always to draw us closer to him and to understand him better. That's right. Amen. Yep. Amen. You know, speaking of that oil field thing, I saw a real quick thing. Uh, I think it was on Yahoo News a couple of days ago that was about Texas being so hard hit by the oil field Bust. crunch. Mm -hmm. Well, I will point out that Saudi Arabia has flooded the market with oil because they're trying to keep Iran in check. So they flooded the market, which means our oil companies are not drilling. They're not going to drill and sell their oil for nothing. Right. But here's the thing. It said, even though the drilling has fallen, fallen, fallen in, in an unbelievable way since 2014, we're still at above record high levels of drilling. So it's like, uh, okay, well, what is the problem then? So my only thing is, I think the Lord is just trying to get each one of us to search our hearts. And that's funny that this is what is up on the screen because I had no idea what mother's devotion was coming up to search our hearts. We're always wanting the Lord to search our hearts. Sometimes we need to search our hearts or let God search our hearts mm -hmm. and show us what's going on in there. Right. And sometimes, you know what? It ain't too pretty. Mm -hmm. Oh, for I'm forgetting before you do your, we've been asking you to write your cable companies and then send us a copy. Mm-hmm. Evidently not that anybody has wrote to the cable companies because we haven't got one letter here from you saying you wrote to the cable company saying that you do enjoy GLC. Would you please write and let them know and then send us a copy. And one of these days you'll find out when you keep watching GLC, your letter paid off. Okay. All right. Well, my devotional is called Let's Get Exposed. And it's from Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. I recently read a story about a rather pompous-looking deacon who was endeavoring to impress upon a class of boys the importance of living a Christian life. Why do you think people call me a Christian? The man asked. After a pause, 
One youngster said, maybe it's because they don't know you. I don't know if that's a true story, but I'm <laughs> sure we've all experienced hypocrisy in our own lives. Mark Twain said, we're all like the moon. We have a dark side and we don't want anyone to see it. Hypocrisy is a dangerous thing. It has turned many a man away from the Lord to search elsewhere for answers. It can ruin an entire generation and more after them. But we have the opportunity to change those generations for the good of God's kingdom. Those of us who know and love God must never stop allowing Him to search our dark sides so that we can more effectively be used as vessels to lead the hungry multitudes to Him. Let's come against the hypocrisy in our lives. Let's ask the Lord to search our hearts today and uproot the things that need uprooting. Let's give our all to God again. There's so much work to be done. Mm, very good. <laughs> there is so much work yes, to there be done. Is. And we've seen the, a past generation turn away from the church because of the hypocrisy they saw. Yeah, I've always had a, a motto that if someone tells you that they're a Christian, watch out. <laughs> because if they have to tell you that they're a Christian, their behavior is probably going to follow that. Mm -hmm. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're not going to tell it by their actions, so. What's, what's on the news, ladies? Lots of, lots lots of, of interesting stuff. things. This first one is from the Jerusalem Telegraphic agency, the JTA. Chicago's influential Jewish Federation has come out against the Iran deal. After a three-hour discussion by the board of directors, a majority opinion emerged and was adopted to call on Congress to oppose the JCPOA, the Iran nuclear agreement, as, as originally submitted and to ask legislators to work with the administration to produce better solutions addressing Iran's nuclear program, the board said in a statement released Friday. With annual revenue of nearly 100 million, the Jewish United Fund, Jewish uh, Federation of Metropolitan Chicago, is a major religious and philanthropic organization. In the statement released a full month after the deal was announced, the Federation's board claimed to represent the diversity of our beloved Chicago Jewish community. To reach its decision on the Iran deal, the board said it met with officials from Barack Obama's administration, is also Israel and the Illinois congressional delegation and independent experts and heard the views of many hundreds of its community members. The board expressed gratitude for the Obama administration's focus on the Iranian nuclear threat, but went on to say that the Iran deal should be strengthened. War is not the only alternative to the deal, which Obama has claimed, and Israel is being singled out. Iran's threats to the U.S. and Israel, its role as the leading state sponsor of terrorism, its destabilizing of neighboring countries, including U.S. allies, its theocratic, anti-democratic regime, its abysmal human rights record, and its Holocaust and anti-Semitism denial must no longer be rationalized or minima minimalized, the board said. It's long past time to place Tehran where it belongs, the wor on the world's political map, isolated and ostracized. Hence, no nuclear accord should provide Iran with an unearned express pass to international legitimacy. The Jewish United Fund and Jewish Federation of Metropolitan Chicago joins at least 17 other Jewish community groups that oppose the deal, along with many that are skeptical but not yet opposed, and a couple that are unsure. Congress is reviewing the deal ahead of a vote to approve or disapprove in September. Moving forward, the board pledged to continue its past work against Iran, which it said saw the creation of an ad advocacy group united against a nuclear Iran and passage of Iran divestment legislation by Illinois, Cook County, and Chicago. The board further said it would push the U.S. government to make credible the military option against Iran, to intensify international efforts against Iran's sponsorship of terrorism, 
and to upgrade military cooperation with Israel, including possibly making Israel a NATO member. From both Chicago and New York, the board said it would advocate for the United Nations to crack down on Iran's Holocaust denial and genocidal statements. Through its support of the Jewish Community Relations Council, the Jewish United Fund, Jewish Federation of Metropolitan Chicago, coordinates the collective policies and programs of 46 uh, constituent U uh, Jewish organizations. Even as it took the potentially divisive stand against the Iran deal, the board repeatedly called for communal unity, saying before and after Congress votes, every Jew is a precious, welcome, valued member of this cherished community. No matter your views, you are us and we are you. We are all better together. That's very interesting. It is. Because, you know, people who aren't paying attention to this kind of thing would just naturally assume that every Jewish community would be siding with Israel. Mm -hmm. That is never the case, folks. No, it isn't. It is never the case. So mm -hmm. for the Jewish Federation to... to to come after having met with all of these people, including members of the Obama administration, and say, no, this is, this is not a good deal. Um, that's a huge deal. Okay, this next article comes from the Times of Israel. A, networking a network representing Israeli businesses launched a hotline meant to serve business owners and exporters facing issues related to the boycott, divestment, sanctions, the BDS. The hotline established by the Presidium of Israel Business Organizations, will handle the complaints and concerns of those facing boycotts or threats of boycotts. The new line will enable us to provide individual and discrete solutions for Israeli businesses exposed to boycotts and attempted boycotts. Dan Kadarivas, director of the Division of Foreign Trade and International Relations at the Manufacturers Association of Israel, told the Israeli business Daily Globes. BDS is not a uniform phenomenon. It is expressed differently in each country. When complaints or reports of such cases are received, we will address the situation specifically using the tools we have in order to provide them with a relevant and correct response, he added. In the framework of the new line, a team of lawyers and economic consultants specializing in international trade will be on hand to advise business owners facing boycotts. All the tools at our disposal will be adapted to the place where a boycott of an Israeli company is being attempted. Sometimes a response can use the law of the country, including a petition by us to the local courts in cooperation with our embassies around the world. We have accumulated experience in such situations and others from previous cases in which BDS operatives tried to boycott Israeli companies. This problem should be addressed, not ignored, but still in proportion said Kata Arivas. In recent weeks, things have gotten out of hand. The matter has been put on the public agenda, and we therefore decided to provide a proper professional address for the business community that is liable to suffer from these and other initiatives relating to a boycott of products or activity. Our objective is to prevent economic relations from being poisoned with politics. In a letter on the issue, Shiraga Brosh, chairman of the Presidium of Israel Business Organizations wrote, for a long time, we've been exposed through the media and some of us personally to growing harassment by BDS activists promoting an economic, academic and cultural boycott of Israel. Unfortunately, these attempts at a boycott have worsened and expanded recently and are not expected to go away in the near future. He wrote, ah. You know, I got a question for you too, <clears throat> both of you. We live in the same house I live, so I know that many hours you spend more than I do listening and watching the news. I have a question for both of you. As a Christian organization, why do I see more of Israel being targeted just like that article? Is it a sign at the end of times that we've been... It's, it's quite biblical, actually. Is you that know, what I mean? It's, it's really the, the sole purpose of why, in my opinion which is a very humble opinion, but it's why I feel like GLC even exists. We are a Christian organization, and our job is to help the church understand how things um, 
in the past 2,000 years historically have affected our thinking and have separated us from the Jewish people. This is never something that God would sanction, much less our very Jewish Messiah. That's right. And that's another thing. We're trying to help the church understand that we have a very Jewish Messiah. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine this afternoon about this subject, which is kind of strange. And something hit me because the name Ted Pierce came up. And, you know, Ted is, we love Ted. Ted is very involved in helping people understand the importance of not forgetting that the Holocaust happened and standing up as Christians because he's a Christian, a Messianic believer. And he calls it Messianic because he understands that Jesus is Jewish, thus Messianic. At any rate, it occurred to me, the church has so lost its understanding of Jesus being a very Jewish Messiah that sadly, folks, we'd have burned them in the ovens. Think about that. It's our job here at GLC to help Christians understand that God would frown upon that. That's right. You know, in the last week, your mother and I have been running around a lot and talking to people and seeing them. Boy, how do you have you? <laughs> and I have never seen so many people stop us and thank us for what GLC is doing and telling people. So that's an answer to your prayer, lady. Well, one of the things that has, has been um, really encouraging to, to us here at GLC is the feedback that we have been getting about the programs that are airing, right. especially the Light of the Southwest programs. And it's um, by people calling and people writing letters and everybody is just like, wow, how do you even choose those programs? And it's like, um, God chooses the programs. For the mm -hmm. most part, I'm the one who has to tell the staff which one is gonna be airing mm -hmm. on a specific night. But it's like, um, which one was it? The one with Dr. John Gar really ministered to some people last week. That wasn't my idea. That actually came from Jerry in the bookstore. And it's like, okay. So, you know, it's, we, we got ourselves a little team over here. We do. And without teamwork, a team doesn't work. <laughs> That's right. Well, this next article is also from JTA Jerusalem Telegraphic Agency. Matishahu was disinvited from a Spanish music festival because he would not publicly endorse Palestinian statehood. The Jewish American reggae singer was scheduled to perform August 22nd at the Rototom Sunsplash Festival near Barcelona. But his show was canceled after he refused to release a public statement backing a Palestinian state, according to the Federation of Jewish Communities of Spain, which called the disinvitation a case of anti-Semitic cowardice. The organizers had been pressured to disinvite Manishahu by activists promoting the boycott, divestment, and sanctions, the BDS movement against Israel, the report said. As Spaniards, we are ashamed of the organizers, the Spanish Federation statement said. In this case, the BDS movement employed all its anti-Semitic arsenal against the participation on Paul on Matthew Paul Miller, using Matayashu's full name. Matishahu, a former Hasid, was the only festival performer asked to endorse a Palestinian state because he is Jewish, the Federation said. Such acts violate fundamental rights, guaranteed by our Constitution, the statement said. According to the El Pais newspaper, other musicians threatened to cancel their performances unless Matishahu made the declaration. Matish who is not an Israeli citizen. Well, good for him for not endorsing it. Amen. Just so that he could have a gig. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> right. Yeah, but it's still really- It's disgusting. It's, it's grievous. It's grievous, people. It is, it is. It's anti-Semitic. Mm -hmm. And we're just sitting back and letting it happen. Okay, this next article from the New York Times. This is great. Three days before a first of its kind damages trial was supposed to start. We told you about this last week. A Middle Eastern bank 
has reached a settlement with hundreds of American plaintiffs, including victims of terrorist attacks around Israel, who had filed a lawsuit against the bank accusing it of supporting terrorism. The spokesman for the bank, that would be Arab Bank, and a spokeswoman for one of the law firms representing the plaintiffs confirmed on Friday that an agreement had been reached, but declined to offer additional details, including the amount of the settlement. Last year, a jury in federal district court in Brooklyn found Arab Bank liable for financing terrorism by processing transactions for members of the militant Islamic group Hamas. The second phase of the trial, assessing the damages Arab Bank would have to pay to some victims of the attack by Hamas, was scheduled to start on Monday. All of the plaintiffs are American victims of Hamas attacks or relatives of people who were killed. A person who had been briefed on the case but was not authorized to speak publicly about it because details of the settlement are confidential said the settlement covered all of the claims brought by the plaintiffs under the Federal Anti-Terrorism Act, a total of about 500 plaintiffs. Michael Elsner, a plaintiff's lawyer with Motley Rice, said through a spokesman that the framework of the settlement agreement will be finalized over the next few months. Under the Anti-Terrorism Act, American victims of terrorist attacks abroad may sue for damages in federal court. Some of the victims in this case lived in the Eastern District of New York, which covers Brooklyn, Queens, and Staten Island in New York City, and Nassau and Salt Lake counties. That's why the case is being heard in Brooklyn. It's nearly impossible to get individual terrorists to appear in the United States for a civil case, and terrorist groups and members do not generally have much money to pay victims. Banks, however, do, and a number of cases against banks saying they help to finance terrorism are pending. The Arab Bank case was the first to go to trial. While the claims involving Hamas were tried first, there were other claims against Arab Bank involving other terrorist groups. Those have not been tried. But plaintiffs in those claims were part of the settlement, the person briefed on the case said. The first part of the Hamas trial, which was about liability, occurred last year. Arab Bank argued that it never knowingly held accounts for terrorists. It said that it screened all of the accounts and transactions it handled against terrorist blacklists and that the few transactions that got through were attributable to clerical errors, such as a different spelling of a name in Arabic and in English. The jury in federal district court in Brooklyn, however, found the bank liable for supporting 24 terrorist acts in and around Israel. Judge Brian M. Kogan later dropped two of the attacks, saying the plaintiffs had not shown strongly enough that Hamas committed them. So 22 remain. Only three of the 22 attacks were being examined for the damages portion of the trial. It was meant to be a bellwether, determining damages for these three attacks, and 17 plaintiffs would give lawyers a sense of how to deal with the remaining plaintiffs. Banking executives said the case set a worrisome precedent, since Arab Bank seemed to follow standard screening procedures to check that its customers were not listed as terrorists. The verdict, they said, could mean banks would pull back from doing work in unstable countries, given the risk that they would later be held liable for financing terrorism. Wow, that's an interesting development. <laughs> see where Don't it you goes. wonder, <clears throat> Arab Bank, that's the name of the bank. That's the name of the bank. Uh -huh. Oh, when I've seen that. that. I've seen that bank in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. On the Damascus side, the Damascus Gate side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't you remember seeing that? Probably Very was interesting asleep. world we're living in. <clears throat> yeah. But don't stop praying for the peace of Jerusalem and for peace in the world. Pray for the persecuted all over the Middle East. There's so many countries where people are being persecuted. We love you. We'll see you next time. Yeah.